You are tired of getting destroyed in pubs and I'm tired of stomping level 24s whenever I go into pubs. So EA just announced the skill-based matchmaking changes and they also told us exactly how the current skill-based matchmaking work. So I'm gonna try to put it in layman's terms as best I can. I'm a multi-time master player in Apex Legends and I also have a degree in electrical engineering. I understood it pretty well and I hope that you can too. So the overall gist of this article is EA actually explaining their current matchmaking system and exactly how it works because we don't need to know anymore because they're coming out with a new matchmaking system that they've been experimenting with for a few months now. So their old skill-based matchmaking system is going out the window and they're gonna try to implement a new one which gives us more fair games. All right, so from here, we're gonna talk about the old matchmaking system and then we're gonna talk about the new matchmaking system. So they basically break down matchmaking into three different things currently. Progression, the skill rating, and then the ultimate matching of players to get into the game. So when they talk about the progression system, they're basically talking about leveling up and how your player level affects things and then doing other things like ranked and doing challenges for battle pass, you know, some form of progression in each system and how this affects things uh, from their studies. So this graph is showing your skill rating. Now it is unnumbered, so I don't really know what this axis truly is, but it shows the skill rating. And then below here, this is the level of the player. This green line in the middle of the box, so the box represents the outliers top and bottom. And then the green line is the median skill level for a given level range. So if you are level 55, that means you fall into this category and the median skill range is here. Whereas if you are level 600 plus like I am, the median skill range is up here. So you can see a big difference. However, in this lower bracket of zero to 300, they're pretty, pretty similar, but then it really starts to change as you go up to level 600 plus. So this is the progression as you get, as you go through the ranks, you are going to get better and better. And they use this in their skill based matchmaking. So then we go on to actual skill rating. So this is a Gaussian distribution. Uh, it's a bell curve. You don't really need to know much more than that. Uh, here, the X axis is actually the skill rating. So this is the skill rating. So the higher skilled players, there's a smaller and smaller percentage of them. And then the low skilled players, there's a very small percentage of very low skilled players. Most people fall somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in here is where most players fall skill wise. So this graph essentially explains exactly how skill based matchmaking works for the current system. It used a bucket system. So you have four buckets. Bucket one is the lowest skill players, you know, new players, very low skilled players. Essentially, this is a bot lobby. And then bucket four is the highest skill of player. So these are the most skilled players and they would go into bucket four. And then most average players are probably gonna be in the bucket two to three, somewhere in there. This graph exactly explains how matchmaking currently works. So basically they have four buckets according to skills. So they basically take this Gaussian distribution, they divide it into buckets and then you get put into a bucket. So bucket one, this is the lowest skill of player. This is like a bot lobby or new players. Bucket four is the highest skill of players. And then of course, most of your average players are gonna fall into bucket two or bucket three. So now we've gone over two portions, that is progression and skill rating, and now how do they actually match people together? In this next section, they're talking about matchmaking. And let me be really clear, this, each of these circles represents a player who have all solo queued into a lobby, whether that be pubs or ranked. So then they explain the difference between pub matchmaking and ranked matchmaking. So in pub matchmaking, they have three players and they try to get the best average skilled teams. So these could all be differently skilled players, but they but each team should come out to the same average skill in an optimal world. That's how they've taken the approach with pubs. Now with ranked, what they actually do is they try to find the same skilled players. So nine, eight, and seven should be similarly skilled players. This is to try to take away the carry from ranked. The issue comes up, and they do talk about this, is that there's only a limited number of players to choose from for any given ranked lobby in any given region. So this oftentimes just doesn't work out, but they try to prevent people from being like totally different skill levels in ranked solo queue lobbies. We all know that doesn't very that doesn't work very well. So there is that, but that's how they're trying to do matchmaking in ranked. Now, when it comes to having pre-made squads, that's totally different. 
they taught they you can kind of just ignore this graphic they're like oh which one should we do should we take the lowest skilled player in a three stack should we take the highest skilled player in a three stack uh should we go with uh the rounded average or should we go with the average it doesn't matter this is the one they do they actually take the highest skilled player in a three stack and then they will put you in their lobby so if i'm playing with my friends who are not very good uh, they are going to have my lobbies and they're going to have a bad time. It's going to be much more difficult than they are used to. That's the current matchmaking system. And now what about future matchmaking? So what they've decided to do rather than having four discrete buckets that people are going to be dropped into based on skill, they are number one, they're going to make more buckets. So they're basically going to have more buckets so they can have a more granular representation of skill. So what about the future of matchmaking? They're doing a couple of things to make matchmaking better. Number one, rather than having these four discrete buckets that people's skill will fall into, they are going to make more buckets so that your skill will be more closely matched with other people. The second thing they're doing is they are looking at this graph right here. So this is the win rate for a given encounter, not a game. And then this is your skill versus uh, the other squad. So if you have the same, the zero point is having the same skill as the other squad, the same average skill rating, then your win rate for an encounter should be about 50%. It's a coin toss because you both have the same skill, right? Now, as your skill increases, so it goes into the positive range. So you are much more skilled here than the person that you're going against. So your win rate goes up to 80% for a given encounter. And then let's say you're much lower skilled than the person you're going against or the squad you're going against. So your win rate for an encounter goes to 20%. So how they basically did it before was as soon as a bucket reached uh, its tip top, then it will just start a game, right? But you only had four buckets. Now it's taking all these new discrete buckets and the skill difference between players and it is dynamically, as they would say, predicting the distribution of incoming players and choosing the optimal trade-off between skill differences and wait time. So basically what that comes down to is it's not going to make you wait forever, but it is trying to match people uh, who have a smaller skill difference. And it's doing that by using these smaller buckets so that it can get people much tighter together. Because when you only had four buckets, that's actually a wide range of skills per bucket. So, and from their testing, they've said that this has really done well. Uh, I, they didn't actually show a graph like supporting that. This is uh, has to do with daytime versus match waiting time. So they didn't really go into the overall performance of individual players in their testing. But hey, it's a different skill-based matchmaking. How bad could it be?